Hi, we're Pretty Gritty. And you're watching PDX Spotlight. I used to run through these fields when I was just knee high Running my bare feet, chasing fireflies Mom would ring the bell come supper time Here's a well Use that water to drink Used it to bathe After working in Granny's field On a summer day I can hear her calling down my name And I got Times. Running like a river, cutting right through these pines. And I got a country soul, buried beneath the cold. Won't you take, take me back to where I was born and raised? Lord, take me home to Sunday Road. Here's my home It's a little broken rough to the touch but On the outside I know it don't look like much Ooh, on the inside there was love And I got blood And I got tired like a river cutting right through these pines and I got a country soul buried beneath the cold won't you take me back to where I was born and raised Lord take me home to Sunday Just a touch of gray It's where I learned to sing Amazing grace And there's power Wonder working power In the blood of the Lamb Ooh, in the blood of the Lamb Ties running like a river through these pines. This old mountain, she's a friend of mine. Ooh, and I got blood and I got ties running like a river through these pines. This old mountain, she's a friend of mine. And I got a country soul buried beneath the cold. Won't you take me back 
to where I was born and raised Lord, take me home Take me home To West Virginia Now, Mama Take me home To Sunday Road Thank you. Welcome to PDX Spotlight. I'm your host, Luke Neal. And today on the show, we are joined by Pretty Gritty. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. I've got Blaine and Sarah. And you are a self-described soulful Americana. So for folks who aren't familiar with your music, how would you describe that for them? Well. Metallica um, and John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> That's my first guess. Blended together. Together. Yes. Um, no, we. Um, I mean, I'll just do a rundown of the instruments that we play, and maybe you can just... Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, well, so we both play acoustic guitar, and um, I play the tenor banjo, Blaine plays the ukulele, and we do some foot and hand percussion, and we do a lot of vocal harmonies. And um, so there's a lot of different like Americana flavors in our music, mm -hmm. um, like rockabilly and blues and bluegrass country, all that kind of stuff mixed together. and. Um, but some of it comes off pretty soulful, so I guess, you know. <laughs> I like <it> that. <laughs> now, how'd you find each other and how the project gets started? Uh, in Washington, D.C., at a heavy metal bar. Because oh, nice. we were both in, I was in a heavy metal band and she was in a hard rock band. Okay. And uh, we were like around 21, 22, mm -hmm. something like that. And then years later, just we all like were in the same circle of people, like other bands, and we all actually used to practice in the same storage space area. Oh, nice! It was like an underground level, and it was like word of mouth. You had to know about like, hey man, there's this spot where you can practice. You can go there two in the morning. You had a keypad to get to the elevator, hmm. and then there was a bar right down the street, and we used to all go there and jam with each other. And uh, years later, we just started. I was like, hey, I sold all my stuff. Half stack's gone. Electric guitar's gone. I got an acoustic guitar. Starting to sing. She was doing the exact same thing without even knowing it, and boom, started playing together. Perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. So what brought you out west from DC? Well, basically we quit our day jobs and we um, decided to travel all over the US for a whole summer. Mm -hmm. So we did this, um, he called it the biggest U-turn. Yeah, the longest, <laughs> the biggest U-turn tour. Yeah. Um, and so we, we were playing shows along the way, but we also were trying to scope out somewhere else to live mm -hmm. because um, we're both like from Maryland, grew up there, and we wanted to get out. So um, Portland was really like a pit stop on the way to Seattle. Mm -hmm. But um, we had such a great time here and it's so beautiful. Um, we ended up scoring a gig while we were here just through the kindness of strangers. Mm -hmm. um, when we went back home to Maryland, um, it just like resonated with us. And the first opportunity we got, we decided to move. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty powerful. Yeah. So what is it? You've played a lot of cities in the U.S. What do you think it is about the Portland music scene that, that makes it stand out? It's just there's more places to play in Portland than like Austin where you don't have to like pay to play. Mm. You're not waiting in line and anybody who's like, well, I'll do it for free. And then that's how that snowballs. And then it's like, well, how about you just pay us if you want to play in our venues, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's just it's like it feels like mom and pop still. OK. A lot of the places you go to and play. DIY, people are all about that. Not that those other cities don't have those qualities, but they're just like, and they're just a lot bigger. Sure. It's possible. Way more saturated. Here, yeah, to mm -hmm. do DIY stuff still and make a living, which is why we, we wanted to move, because we wanted to not do the day job thing and hmm. just do music. So it was, it's possible here. And it was more affordable, too. Yeah. As far as like right. cost of living and stuff like that, although that has increased since we've been here, and yeah. so has the traffic. We apologize in advance for yeah, we're part of adding problem. to that pile. But. So do you think that there's also a spirit of uh, collaboration that we see here in Portland? Absolutely. There's a, like the community mm -hmm. for anything, like just whatever you're into, there's a community for it here. Mm -hmm. And they're all super connected. Like I just went to, you know, Thanksgiving just happened. And uh, I had some friends of mine who I've met, the first people I met when we got to town who all play music, they had a Friendsgiving over at uh, Home Base. Uh, brewing or a coffee coffee shop yeah and it was just like show up at this thing it's closed the owner like kept it open for them for free and there was like maybe 20 of us collectively mm -hmm. like 
everybody brought food. There's a stage. Everybody was just playing. It was a, it was really cool. And you know, it was just like you find things like that, and you want to yeah. stick around. You know, it's a really cool niche. Uh venues in town that some bands don't get the chance to play as a duo, do you find that that's a nice advantage to tour with and uh, pick some venues on your own? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What are some of the ones in town that you like that are set up specifically for a, a band like yours? Um, specifically for a band like ours, I don't know, because we, like, we are a duo, but we can sound like a full band. So we can bring, uh, like, there's a little bit more dynamics um, since we do play percussion and, like, we utilize all the extremities and, you know. Mm -hmm. So we can get really boot stomping or get, be, like, really, you know, tender and, you know, one guitar and two vocals kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, some of our favorite spots, um, I mean, I'd say like Alberta Street Pub. You absolutely. Play there a lot. Yeah. yeah um, and then, um, well, we've, we've been fortunate enough to play the Doug Fur. And a couple what, of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what I really love is in the summertime they do um, the picking on Sundays. And so I'd say that that's a really cool, like, geared tour toward, um, like, our style of music anyway. That For acoustic, sure. That acoustic mm -hmm. kind of thing. Skidmore Fountain. Yes, that's Great where we got our start. That was our first Busking performance. Busking at Skidmore Fountain. Was at Skidmore oh, that's Fountain. cool. <laughs> when we were passing through, uh, some street kids were like, you should, they were like, oh, you guys, Traveling through, you guys want to busk? Like, go over here. They're giving us the lay, like the layout of the city, and like where to go. Mm -hmm. Where's a really cool spot? And we were like, okay, let's just go do that. And we sold like 30 CDs within an hour and a half. You know, it was really, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. It's a nice testament to the music scene again yeah. Yeah. in Portland. I want to feel the 
Been supporting an EP that you tracked out in Nashville, but you just got back from recording an LP with that same group of guys. Um, talk to us about that. Is that an evolution in your sound, and, and what can fans expect to hear from it? Um, well, so I just want to start by talking about Creative and Dreams a little bit. They're, um, they sort of act as like a small kind of label, but they're more like a network of, of different artists. And there's um, a couple who have had this really amazing um, life in music. The, mm -hmm. the, the woman behind Creative and Dreams, um, she's kind of like a Nashville queen. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, so, like during like the 60s, 70s, 80s, like she was very much a part of that scene. Mm -hmm. And then um, the guy, uh, Fred, it's Fred and Rose, mm -hmm. um, Fred has a lot of experience um, with, um, in Europe with like European, like, I mean, really big names. Um, so now they've kind of settled down and they decided to um, help out musicians like us who um, don't have this awesome financial backing, who, you know, are doing it completely DIY, you know, but, you know, they see something in us and other artists like us and they decide to just, you know, give us a, some support. Um, so we can go to Nashville and record, you know, at a, at a nice place with a, a great producer and um, we don't have to worry about some of the things like, you know, having to raise money and stuff yeah, like that. we've been very fortunate in that <laughs> yeah, sense, like um, the last two records. Right. Know. Up front and money is like, what is that? I know. We're like, Yay, it's like, let's just go have fun. <laughs> we really want to like, record oh. these songs, but we can't afford it, so I guess we're just going to play them live all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Record them on our voice memo. What does something like that do for your confidence for someone oh, to step it, forward? It, it it's feels, reassurance in yes, some way. You know, yes. it like just helps you know that you're not like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Right. I had a job <laughs> and things. <laughs> I just was right. like, no, I don't want to do that. And like after 25, like, <laughs> yeah. you do all that when and you're like, right out of high school you do that. We're like, ah, yeah. we'll be 30 soon. Let's just, uh, and this was years ago. It's like, let's just quit jobs. We don't need 401k. Right. <laughs> Who needs that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That's Cereal. awesome. Yeah. Um, but so what? one big focus on the last, the e first EP we did with them, is that they, they really loved our vocals and like could toss everything aside if they want, you know. Um, so they, they honed in on really bringing out what we do vocally on that um, EP. And so um, this time around, uh, they still have a huge focus on the vocal harmonies and stuff, but um, we, we ended up playing a lot more of like the instruments on it. Um, we had a lot more time, like last two. year, we, we had two and a half days to get everything done. Yeah. on our end so um, this time we had two whole weeks so we were like building like drum tracks and um, you know just really taking our time um, when where we d we couldn't do it before sure um, so I don't know and and this one is there's a nice variety like the last one was pretty pretty low-key pr like it's yeah kind, kind of um, darker prettier um, a little more somber sounding. Yeah. Um, but like this a lonely road. Exactly. Lonely road EP <laughs> on iTunes. Um, but this one has, um, you know, a little bit of rock and roll flavor, a little bit more upbeat stuff. It has the tender stuff as well, but um, just, just we were able to showcase a little bit more. town is that you've been feeling down can't you see I've been feeling the same you got troubles you got worries you got doubts so come on open up to me babe you be the sails I'll be the boat we'll sail together 
What's really charming about your project is the intimacy you have on that first EP and kind of the, the ambiance, so it sounds like you're going to hold on to some of that for the yeah, LP, right? Of mm -hmm. course. Nice. Yeah. Good. It's definitely in there. <laughs> and do you have plans for 2017 to uh, hit the road with the, the new LP? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. waiting to see, like, when it's all said and done, you know, those are things that it's all behind the curtain, figure everything out right. and then get it presented out to release it, see what kind of, uh, what kind of bites and nibbles they get off of it, and then we'll start pushing it as like with touring. Um, we've even talked about maybe going overseas to Europe yeah. to tour, Ho that would be hopefully, fun. Hopefully, yeah, we would love to do something like that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Because it's exciting to, to finish a record, and I mean, I don't have to tell you, there's so much work that goes into producing and writing and recording that, are you a little nervous to share it with the world, or are you just excited to get it out there? Super yeah, excited. we're super, this yeah. is like, this is the best. the best album that we've done. <laughs> yeah. I feel, and it's like, we the last EP we had, three covers and three originals on there. This one, there's uh, two covers on there and then a co-write from the, the uh, producer. Cool. And then the rest of the songs are ours and they're like the best songs I feel like we've written. Yeah. yeah. So. That's exciting. I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to it for sure. I'm like, let's just give it to them now. Do you want to have the mix or match? No, just right now. <laughs> just like, just like, release no, it. We got to wait. Yeah. Like, All right. Fine. Yeah, the part that I, I don't like is like once the music is already finished and like you got your, out, uh, your artwork and everything, then there's the whole like, okay, let's figure out a strategy of how to release it. Mm -hmm. And that's just like so overwhelming. Like, yeah. Where do you even start? Like, you know, it's just, right. it's a strange thing. You know, I, one day I hope we don't have to really worry about that end of it, you know. Like, to worry you know, about like, the <laughs> commerce of the music yes. business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, we're done, right? So you'll have the, it'll be in the mailbox next week. <laughs> like right. 500 copies, right? Cool, see you. Doesn't work that no. way. You are your own business owner at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you brought it up earlier. You've got an EP available. How about you tell the fans where they can find your EP, download your music, and also uh, contact you? Um, well, so we're at prettygrittymusic.com. Um, 
The Lonely Road EP is on, um, is on iTunes. It's available for download. Um, you can also go to our website and um, just go to the, to the merch. I think it's either called store or merch. This is terrible because I don't go to our website that much. But um, we all have all of no, our albums available on the, at Square. Okay. Square.com. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and also then, Creative and Dreams, you can go on yeah, the, Creative and Dreams. There. Com. And it's on Bandcamp as well. Okay. Um, and then, you know, if you come check us out live, we always sell them. <laughs> right. Yeah, be sure to come say hi if they see you yeah. live, right? Yeah. Well, thanks again for being here. We really appreciate you being at such a beautiful venue. It's yeah, exciting yeah, to have excited. you playing at the old church here we're with excited. us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You bet. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, pretty gritty. Right.